Good day everyone. Today we are going to be studying about the introduction course in geotechnical engineering. This course is entitled Geotechnical Engineering from the Beginning. I will be presenting this topic. I am Engineer Russell G. Verdebel. Our reference material for this course is Fundamentals of Geotechnical Engineering by Raha and Vance. Virtually every structure is supported by a soil or rock. Those that aren't either fly, float, or fall over. That is what Richard L. Handy said in the 1995. The typical issues addressed by geotechnical engineers include the following. What are the soils and rock in the subsurface at a construction site? Can the soils and rocks beneath construction site safely support the proposed project? What groundwater conditions currently exist? How might they change in the future and what impact do they have on the project? What will be the impact of any planned excavation, grading, or filling? Are the natural or proposed earth slopes stable? If not, what must we do to stabilize them? What kinds of foundations are necessary to support planned structures and how should we design them? If the project requires retaining walls, what kind would be best and how should we design them? If the project requires a tunnel or underground opening, how would it be excavated and supported? How will the site respond to potential earthquakes? Has the ground become contaminated with chemical or biological materials? If yes, do these materials represent a health or safety hazard? If so, what must we do to rectify the problem? There are four geotechnical engineering design processes. The first is the site exploration and characterization. This is the most important task because it provides input data for all subsequent tasks. Usually, it involves drilling vertical holes called exploratory borings into the ground. Obtaining and testing samples or conducting tests in situ are what we call in place or the actual situation of our soil. The next is the engineering analysis. This is based on the data gained from site exploration and characterization. It uses soil mechanics and rock mechanics, which include empirical, analytical, and numerical methods. The third is the design. It requires the application of engineering judgment, experience from previous projects, and economics. Geotechnical engineers are reluctant to deviate too far from the design criteria that have been proven worthy in the past. This is why understanding customary standards of practice is very important. The last is the construction phase. So, geotechnical services during construction phase include the following. We are examining the soil and rock conditions actually encountered and comparing them with those anticipated in the design. Comparing the actual performance with that anticipated in the design and Provide quality control testing. For engineering purposes, soil is defined as the uncemented aggregate of mineral grains and decayed organic matter, that is the solid particles, with liquid and gas in the empty spaces between the solid particles. Soil is used as a construction material in various civil engineering projects, and it supports structural conditions. Thus, civil engineers must study the properties of soil, such as its origin, green size distribution, ability to drain water, compressibility, shear strength, and load-bearing capacity. Soil mechanics is a branch of science that deals with the study of the physical properties of soil and the behavior of soil masses subjected to various types of forces. 
Soil engineering is the application of the principles of soil mechanics to practical problems. Geotechnical engineering is the subdiscipline of civil engineering that involves natural materials found close to the surface of the earth. It includes the application of the principles of soil mechanics and rock mechanics to the design of foundations containing structures and earth structures. The record of a person's first use of soil as a construction material is lost in antiquity. In true engineering terms, the understanding of geotechnical engineering as it is known today began early in the 18th century according to Skempton in 1985. For years, the art of geotechnical engineering was based only on past experience through a succession of experimentation without any real scientific character. Based on those experimentations, many structures were built, some of which are still standing, some have crumbled. Record tells us that ancient civilization flourished along the banks of rivers, such as the Nile River in Egypt, the Tigris and Euphrates River in the Mesopotamia or the Middle East, the Huanghe or Huanghe or what we call the Yellow River in China, and the Indus in India. Dikes dating back to about 2000 BC were built in the basin of the Indus to protect the town of the Mohenjo-Dara in what became Pakistan after 1947. During the Chan Dynasty in China, many dikes were built for irrigation purposes. There is no evidence that measures were taken to stabilize the foundation or check the erosion caused by floods according to Carousel in 1985. Beginning around 2700 BC, several pyramids were built in Egypt, most of which were built as tombs for the countries Pharaoh was and their consorts during the Old and the Middle Kingdom periods. The construction of pyramid posed formidable challenges regarding foundation, stability of slopes, and construction of underground chambers. With the arrival of Buddhism in China during the Eastern Han Dynasty in 68 AD, thousands of pagodas were built. Many of these structures were constructed on silt and soft clay layers. In some cases, the foundation pressure exceeded the load-bearing capacity of the soil and thereby caused extensive structural damage. Probably one of the most famous examples of problems related to soil-bearing capacity in the construction of structures prior to the 18th century is the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. The construction of the tower began in 1173 AD when the Republic of Pisa was flourishing and continued in various stages for over 200 years. The structure weighs about 15,700 metric tons and is supported by a circular base having a diameter of 20 meters. The tower is tilted in the past to the east, north, west, and finally the south. Recent investigation showed that the weak clay layer exists at a depth of 11 meters below the ground surface, compression of which caused the tower to tilt. In a height of 54 meters, it became more than 5 meters out of plumb. The tower was closed in the 1990 because it was feared that it would either fall over or collapse. It has recently been stabilized by excavating soil from under the north side of the tower. About 70 metric tons of earth were removed in 41 separate extractions that span the width of the tower. As the ground gradually settled to fill the resulting spaces, the tilt of the tower is the tower now leans 5 degrees. The half degree change is not noticeable but it makes the structure considerably more stable. 
After encountering several foundation-related problems during the construction, over a century past, engineers and scientists began to address the properties and behavior of soil in a more methodological manner starting in the early part of the 18th century. Based on the emphasis and nature of study in the area of geotechnical engineering, time span from the 1700 to the 1927 can be divided into four major periods. The first is the pre-classical from the 1700 to 1776 AD. Second is the classical soil mechanics phase one from 1776 to 1856 AD. Third is the classical soil mechanics phase two from 1856 to 1910. And the last is the modern soil mechanics from 1910 to 1927. Pre-classical period of soil mechanics starts in the 1700 to 1776. This period concentrates on studies relating to natural slope and unit weight of various types of soils as well as the semi-empirical earth pressure theories. Henry Galter, he is a French royal engineer. In 1717, he studied the natural slopes of soils when deep in a heap for formulating the design procedure for retaining walls. Bernard Forrest de Bellidor from 1671 to 1761, he published a textbook in 1729 in France. He proposed a theory of four lateral earth pressure on retaining walls that was follow up to Gaultier's 1717 original study. Francois Godroy, 1705-1759, he is a French engineer in 1746, the first laboratory model test results on retaining wall with sand tactile was reported. He also observed existence of slip planes in the soil, soil at failure. And the last in the pre-classical period is J.J. Manuel. In 1808, he summarizes Godroy's study. The second is the Classical Soil Mechanics Phase 1, from 1776 to 1856 AD. Charles Augustin Colum, 1736 to 1806. In 1776, he used calculus to determine the true position of the sliding surface in soil behind a retaining wall. He used the laws of friction and cohesion for solid bodies. Jacques Frederic Franchise, 1775-1833, and Claude Louis Marie Henry Navier, 1785-1836. In 1820, the French engineer, Franchise, and French applied mechanics professor, Navier, studied the special case of Colomb's work, which are related to the inclined backfields and backfields supporting surcharge. Jean Victor Poncelet in 1788-1867 He is an army engineer and professor of mechanics. In 1840, he extended Colum's theory by providing a graphical method for determining the magnitude of lateral earth pressure on vertical and inclined retaining walls with arbitrarily broken polygonal ground surfaces. He is the one to first use the symbol P for soil friction angle, provided the first ultimate bearing capacity, capacity theory for shallow foundation. Alexander Collin, 1808 to 1890. Mr. Collin, in 1846, an engineer, provided the details for deep slips in clay, slopes, cutting, and embankments. William John McCorn Rankine, 1820 to 1872. In 1857, he is a professor of civil engineering at the University of Glasgow. He published a study in which provided a notable theory on earth pressure and equilibrium of earth masses. Rankine's theory is a simplification of Coulomb's theory. The next period is the classical soil mechanics phase 2 from 1856 to 1910. Henry Tilbert Gaspar Darcy, 1803 to 1858. 
Mr. Darcy is a French engineer. In 1856, he published a study on permeability of sand filters. Next is Sir George Howard Darwin, 1845 to 1912. Mr. Darwin is a professor of astronomy. He conducted laboratory tests to determine the overturning moment on a hinge wall retaining sand in loose and dense states of compaction. Next is Joseph Valentin Bosnitsk from 1842 to 1929. In 1885, he published the development of the theory of the stress distribution under load-bearing areas in a homogeneous, semi-infinite, elastic, and isotropic region. And the last is Osborne Reynolds from 1842 to 1912. In 1887, he demonstrated the phenomena of dilatancy in sand. The next is the modern soil mechanics. And this is the last. In this period, results of research conducted on place were published in which the fundamental properties and parameters of clay were established. So it started from 1910 to 1927. Albert Moritz Utterberg from 1846 to 1916. He is a Swedish chemist and soil scientist. He explained the consistency of cohesive soils by defining liquid, plastic, and shrinkage limits and also defined plasticity index as the difference between the liquid limit and plastic limit. Jean Fontard from 1884 to 1962. He carried out investigation on cause of failure of high earth dam at France in 1909. He conducted a drain double shear test on clay specimen to determine shear strength parameters. Next is Arthur Langley Bell from 1874 to 1956. He is a civil engineer from England. He developed relationship for lateral pressure and resistance in clay as well as the bearing capacity of shallow foundations in clay. Walmar Fellinius, 1876 to 1957. He is an engineer from Sweden. He developed the stability analysis of saturated clay slopes, that is, P is equal to zero condition. And the last two is Carl Terzaghi and Ralph B. Peck. Carl Terzaghi from 1883 to 1915. He is from Austria. He developed the theory of consolidation for clays as we know today and was published in the Terzaghi celebrated book. As you can see on the screen, it's called Earth Bound Mechanic of Boden Physical Structure Grand Lodge in 1925. He is also known as the father of modern soil mechanics. Mr. Terzaghi presided the first conference of the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering or the ISSMFE held at Harvard University in 1936. In 1997, ISMFE or the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering was changed to ISSMGE or the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. And last is Mr. Ralph B. Peck. He is the godfather of soil mechanics. He continues the study of Carl Terzaghi. He was born in 1912 and died in 2008. Thank you for listening for our short discussion. So for queries, you can comment your questions or you can message me directly on my contacts that I gave you. I will upload a copy of this presentation or a PDF of the lectures on one of our classroom accounts and yeah that's all. Thank you. See you next time.